Well, should we just get right into the Dynamite Report for last night? Because a lot of stuff happened on that show. Sure. Opened up with Kenny Omega and Alan Angels, a rematch of a famous match from about a year and a half ago where Kenny Omega went six minutes or seven minutes with Alan Angels and the internet exploded. How dare... What a horror... Eh, eh. It was. It, I that. it literally was nothing at the time, and it's even less of anything today. But they're actually turning into a storyline because he is the champion, and Five is uh, a guy in the Dark Order. But the story is that Kenny Omega just always has a hard time with Alan Angels. So he went out there, and they went back and forth, and Alan Angels got near falls. And you know what the key to this is? Set. The key is the place was going crazy. I'll talk about that later. But, of course, Kenny Omega won, and then he was going to kill Alan Angels with a chair afterwards. But who should run in but the Hangman, Adam Page? And Hangman went for the buckshot, Omega fled, and Hangman told him, you've got ten days left with this title. It's a good opening segment there. CM Punk did a promo where he largely talked about John Moxley and... Got the fans to chant for Moxley. Moxley references all over the show. There was like no hiding what is going on with John Moxley. No ignoring it or anything like that. I mean, it is, his real life is, I don't want to say it's a storyline, but I mean, they're acknowledging everything that's going on. And he was replaced in the tournament with Miro. It is very interesting because Punk said that he could have been in the Eliminator tournament, but he is not because he is not able to finish off his issues with Eddie Kingston yet because Eddie Kingston is not here. So they very much pushed that Eddie Kingston is... Like, I think this guy's turning heel. I've been wrong before. A lot of people are are saying there's no way that's going to happen. He's too over. But, like, this was very much CM Punk saying, don't blame me for this. This is not my fault. This is Eddie Kingston's fault. So either Eddie's turning heel... Or they're doing the deal where CM Punk ultimately turns heel. He's blaming all of this on Eddie. And then ultimately he's going to do something dastardly and he's the one that's turning. I feel like it's too early to do that with CM Punk. But, I mean, this was not just, hey, you know, we're going to do a match and I'm mad at this guy. This was flat out telling the fans to boo Eddie Kingston. It was interesting. We had a brawl with the Super Click, Jurassic Express, Christian Cage... Superkick laid him out. Christian did the concerto on uh, Adam Cole. So it looks like the pay-per-view is either going to be a six-person match or they're going to do what was originally on Tony Khan's pad, which is the Jurassic Express versus Nick and Matt Jackson and Adam Cole versus Christian. So we'll find out which way they go to the pay-per-view. Probably depends a lot on how they time out the show. FTR beats Samurai Del Sol who got a lot of heat yesterday. We can talk about that later. FTR versus Samurai Del Sol and Aerostar. I mean, it was like, I don't even know how to explain this match. Like, some of it was really good, and some of it was not so good. But I couldn't say that it was a bad match, but uh, it was it was certainly not perfect. And Cash Wheeler ended up pinning Aerostar using the ropes for leverage and the tights. And so they retained the AAA tag team titles. We had an inner circle segment, which was uh, it was entertaining. I mean, I did not expect American Top Team to be as good as they have been in this storyline. Because it's a bunch of MMA fighters. Like, we all know that uh, Dan Lambert can talk. But, I mean, Paige Van Zant has been great. And uh, Junior Dos Santos, who's had like 30 minutes of training but has always wanted to do this. Like, he's been great in the ring. So they're going to do a five-on-five match, and the fifth guy they chose was, in fact, Dan Lambert. So he will be in this street fight coming up at the pay-per-view. We'll talk more about that as well later, because there's a lot to get into there. Jamie Hayter beat Anna J. Not a good match. They got in and out, thankfully, but Jamie Hayter moves on in the tournament. We had a brawl with MGF and Darby Allen. MGF, of course, once again fled. Darby stood tall. Darby was very, very upset at the idea that MGF is going to beat him with a headlock. Love it. <laughs> Andrade El Idolo and Cody Rhodes. Andrade beat him after Cody went for a tope 
and was hit with the AAA tag team titles, which were held by uh, FTR. And it's another interesting match because Cody was largely booed, but he did not work this match as a heel. He worked this match as a babyface. There were a few spots where they popped big for him, like the Dusty Rhodes spots and going for the figure four. But in general, they hated the guy. And it it appears, I mean, Tony Khan yesterday said that uh, this was not an unexpected reaction that Cody has been getting. And quite frankly, how could it be unexpected with uh, Malachi Black? But I am insistent. I believe that Cody is not turning heel. So I think what they're going to do is just, you know, they're going to accept the fact that he's going to be booed. But he is going to be a babyface. He's essentially going to be a John Cena. So, I mean, maybe there will be more to this down the road. Maybe he will turn. But, I mean, there was no nothing in this match where he was positioned as a heel. He was positioned as a total babyface. But I think they were very well aware that he was just going to be booed by everybody. So, it is a very interesting situation with him. And then the main event was Miro as the replacement for John Moxley against Orange Cassidy. I think the match went exactly as long as it would have been with Moxley, but I did like that Miro beat him in like seven minutes, decisively, with his finish, via submission. Because you know what? This Miro walked into a tournament that everybody else has been wrestling multiple matches for. So if you have to do a replacement in a tournament, you cannot do the replacement where it's like, oh, is he deserving or not? He went in and he killed Orange Cassidy. So they want you to know that this guy was a replacement. He's now in the finals. But it's not like he doesn't deserve to be in the finals of this tournament because he massacred a dude that went to the semifinals. So I thought it was overall a very good show. It was not a perfect show. Some of the matches hit or miss. I think a lot of people were really... uh, I mean, this Moxley thing really messed a lot of people up. And I think that that was a... I think that was a, a dark cloud that hovered over this entire show. But overall, I really liked it. What did you think? You know, yeah, it was a dark cloud, but it had a nice silver lining to it because they didn't insult their fans or, you know, their the people that know what's going on or anybody with this whole, with any of the stories that they told last night, especially when it came to John Moxley. So, you know, and with what CM Punk said, what Tony Khan said after the show, and then, of, of course, certainly what he said on the show yesterday, you know, that, that to me is the big bright silver lining in this. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm wondering if Lance is going to come on the show tonight and tell you that, that some of these matches and segments were sponsored by The Sun for the amount of light that was <laughs> shown through punches and moves and things like that from a... Nuts and but from that aspect, it was not a winner of a show. There were, you know, moments that ah, you know, Anna Jay and and uh Jamie Hayter was not pretty. There were I know Dave brought up last night the brawl with FTR and, and Penta and, and Fe- it just was it was one of those nights. It was not a a, a steamboat flare, you know, eighty nine type of, of show, but it, it also didn't have to be in the fact that they did move everything forward, I think, in really good ways. And, you know, there's a lot we can get into about the show, but Miro being inserted into that tournament One thing I'll add to what you said, not only is it important to get him over, I think even more than that, it's not insulting anybody with the story because, number one, he was the next rated guy that could have went in. And two, not only is he a new guy in and you want to make him strong because Orange Cassidy has been wrestling, because these other people have been wrestling, here's a guy who's going in fresh. And and Orange Cassidy's already banged up. He immediately belly to belly him on the floor, kept working on him. So I thought the story they told that way I thought was really, really good. And I know we're pushing up against break here, but, you know, I don't think there were really a whole lot of misses as far as the storytelling went. Just maybe a couple moments hey, in Brian, the ring. You remember the story where Canyon called you from the locker room and asked you if somebody was Fritz past? Yes! Yeah, Fritz. Canyon calls me and he goes, Alvarez! He always called me Alvarez. Alvarez! I, I'm having an argument right here. Fritz von Erich, alive or dead? And I said, I hope you get your money. It is not on speakerphone. He was just on his. And I said, I hope you get your money, but uh, he's dead. There's a pause, and then I hear, I told you he was alive! And he hung up. <laughs> If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, 
the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.